Hey guys, are you tired of playing as white? Or in other words, are you tired of playing the same openings with white pieces? Well, four months ago, I released a video titled One Secret to Chess, Never Play as White Ever Again. And one of the openings that I briefly talked about was the Budapest Gambit where black plays e5 on the second move to gambit a pawn and then try getting it back on the third move. And after knight f3, this is where you go knight c6 and black usually plays bishop f4 after which you go bishop b4 check knight bd2 and then queen e7 if you remember very well i said this is where most of your unprepared opponents play point to a3 in an effort to chase your dark squad bishop away but this is where the famous budapest trap may occur with a move knight g takes e5 and after a b you simply met your opponent like this now listen i know this may sound a little bit cheap but this is not what this video is all about in today's video i just want to show you more lines with white pieces if you still want to play the budapest as white so to achieve this you need to start with a prophylactic move that doesn't seem to do much for example beginning with the move pawn to f4 on knight to f3 on move one which i'm going to show you later but hey it is what it is now in the actual sense this is called the wear opening even masters do play this at times you can see in the masters database a few games there black may play e5 on the first move d5 knight f6 you can see that black players are doing all sorts of things because they don't have an actual preparation for this so that's one beauty anyway let's begin with d5 after this i propose you go knight to f3 stopping pawn to e5 in this position stockfish likes pawn to c5 after which you go pawn to e4 immediately you can see the top plate move is d takes e4 after which you go knight g5 they defend their pawn with knight f6 then you go on knight c3 again you can see bishop f5 is the top played move and now this is when you go bishop b5 check so this is check knight c6 will just allow us to double up black spawns along the c file which is not good so they normally play knight bd7 and this is when you go queen e2 again you can see the top played move is pawn to a6 where you can now safely take on e4 with your g knight and once again, what do we see here? A takes B5, the top played move. And just like in the actual Budapest, this is how you deliver a smothered mat. Let me know if you like this in the comment section down below. Let's move on. All right, so it is not worth it that you can also begin with knight to f3, which is my top recommendation actually, because you are more guaranteed that your opponent is going to respond with d5. You can see d5 is the top played move by black, which you want to see. And only after this, you go pawn to a4. So you just changed the move order, but the idea is still the same. And black may be tempted to play pawn to c5. Why? Because they want to develop their queen's knight behind their c pawn, which is normal for, you know, people to do in chess. And this is when you go pawn to e4. So our Budapest white version works against this pawn structure for black. And I'm going to show you what else you can do if black doesn't play pawn to c5 on the second move. Anyway, again, they are going to take, obviously, you go knight g5, counter attacking that pawn, knight to f6, knight c3, double attacking the e4 pawn. Black likes defending this with tempo, but you still go bishop b5 check. By the way, knight c6 may allow bishop takes. So that's why they play knight bd7 and this is when you go queen e2 again now listen this time after pawn to a6 and knight g takes e4 black may be aware of this smoothed checkmate on d6 knight d6 checkmate so you may see some of them taking your knight on e4 first and after you take back your opponent may just take your second knight as well and this time you need to be a little bit careful because if you just carelessly take their bishop they're going to win your free piece on b5 that's why you need to get rid of your light squared bishop first before taking black slide squared bishop position is equal stockfish doesn't have a problem with this and it's just a game where the best player has to win and let me just show you a little bit on how we make strategies in chess for example after point to e6 no tricks or traps involved at this stage for example you can go castle short if you want or play queen f3 or pawn to d3 but let me tell you one secret of strong chess players they always look for attacking moves or moves that will give them hope for attacking possibilities in the future for example a strong player in this position would play something like 
Rook a3, that's a strategy, it's not written in any book. And maybe this rook may sit on c3 someday, or f3, or even on h3. And only then will white cast a shot. Back to the Budapest initial position where you play e4, then black takes, and then knight g5, knight f6, and knight c3, double attacking the e4 pawn. In this position, black normally goes bishop f5 in an effort to defend their e4 pawn, but there are some people who will just ignore this and play something like knight c6, for example, you know, just minding their own business. The pawn on e4 is already a dead pawn, so you don't want to take it if you have something better to do. So just develop a piece which was doing nothing on its initial square. So this forces black to play e6, and this is when you can cast a shot. By the way, this doesn't make sense. Queen d4 in an effort to protect the pawn. I mean, here you can just play queen e2, and on the next move, you are going to win back your pawn. So this doesn't make sense, absolutely. Anyways, after you cast a shot, black may play something like pawn to h6, what do you do? This is when you take back that pawn. It was already a dead pawn. If bishop e7, the best thing you can do in these kinds of positions where black's bishop is on e7 and their knight is on f6 is just to trade everything. I mean, given a chance, you should even take that bishop so that you remain with a bishop pair. Anyway, speaking of strategy, this is when you can develop your rook on a3. No need to memorize, just make your own strategies. What I'm showing you are my own strategies. I would play rook a3 here in an effort to plant my rook on f3 or on g3. Why on g3? Because black doesn't have a dark squared bishop to harass my rook, so that'll be good for my eyeballs and my elbow. Anyway, so I'll play rook a3 here, bishop d7 let's say, and then I play rook f3 harassing this queen, I'm going to go rook g3 here, and then play pawn to d3, so I'm playing all these things in order to have an upper hand, and remember, the best planner wins in chess. Let's look at something else that black can do as well. So after knight f3, d5, and a4, in order for our reverse Budapest to work, we still want black to play c5. Remember, they can play all sorts of things. Again, knight c6, we're going to look at that. And this is when you want to play e4. After de, you go knight g5, and most of the times they play knight f6, after which you go knight c3. I want to show you another way of punishing black after they play bishop f5. So at this point, your opponent will think you just want to play the same thing, the same kind of cheap trick with smooth admit, so they may be ready for that. But this may be the right time for you to change your move sequence a little bit. In order to surprise them, just go bishop c4 right away instead of bishop b5. And this will force your opponents to play pawn to e6. I mean, because what else can they do? Now, I want you to try this, guys. Just play pawn to f3. Now, I understand with perfect play, this is not the best thing that you can ever do in this world, especially in rapid blitz and bullet. Black is going to take your pawn on f3 because what else do they know? So this is when you take back with your queen as if you are targeting the b7 pawn and you are going to see most of your opponents playing knight c6 to cover their b7 pawn. And what do you do here? <laughs> Watch. Knight takes f7, sacrificing your knight. And at the same time, double attacking your opponent's queen and rook if they don't do nothing. They mostly take that knight because what else? After this, just know that you have won the game because this gives you a chance to take their light squared bishop on f5 like that. And I can assure you to say most of your opponents will be like, what? Because the thing is, black spawn on e6 can't take your queen because it is pinned by your bishop. So next you're going to take that pawn and I've seen many people playing queen d7 or even queen d6. I mean, it doesn't matter. For example, queen d6. Guys, first of all, you can just hide your king on d1. I should mention to say castling shot is a blunder here. You should use your mind, not just playing for traps. I mean, black can just play queen d4 check and win your light squad bishop for free. So if you exercise a bit of patience here, you can see that castle shot is a blunder. I mean, there's no need to memorize anything here. Things are straightforward. So king d1 makes a lot of sense just to avoid queen e5 check. I mean, you don't want to exchange queens, right? Another move that you can consider is knight e4. But with this move, you have to be 
prepared for this after which you take and then at least emerge with a pawn but the reason why you want to play king d1 is to avoid this because this time if queen e5 comes you can simply retreat your queen back to h3 because you don't want to exchange queens if you are the one attacking now nah, casper black can just exchange queens like this yes that's check but after you take and then they take you are still going to win that pawn on e6 like this the whole idea is that you are the one who will always be ahead in development i mean there's always a way to win that pawn anyway if king f6 you just go knight d5 check and on the next move you're going to win that rook but hey it is what it is again but there are times when black may surprise you even in the bishop c4 line where they just let you do your thing and after this and knight takes f7 sacrifice they don't take your knight immediately i mean that's if black has seen this before they're just going to play something like a queen c7 here in order for them to you know maintain their advantage a little bit but that allows you to win the I mean they are rook why queen c7 queen c7 was in preparation for knight d4 you know going for this because they know they are going to win your rook someday but you can try your luck bishop b5 check for example king d8 then you go queen f2 let them take and after something like king f1 yeah let them take even your rook and just continue playing chess here there's still room for error this is just a game where the best player has to win anyway last line what if black doesn't allow you to play your reverse budapest opening for example after knight f3 d5 and pawn to a4 let's say black doesn't play pawn to c5 which allows you to go e4 what do you do well maybe there's something that we can do for example if they play knight to f6 you can go back to the d4 opening for example play the london system or the actual queen's gambit line that's if you want you can even play the catalan i mean we've seen grandmasters transposing their openings like this so it's not just about tricks and traps there are so many ways to kill a rat or try d3 if you don't know what to do for example and again you can see in the leeches database the top played move is point to c5 this time because black wants to develop his knight behind the c pawn and so if you want this is when you can play pawn to e4 right away allowing black to take right and then you go knight g5 you know the tennis on gambit ideas and i don't know why but most people still take on d3 first of all if this comes i can still take i mean you shouldn't always be jealous of exchanging queens there is no attack but if they take you just take back if pawn to h6 i guess you already know our tennis on gambit idea where you win black's queen on d8 because black's king cannot escape from sobibu so on the next move you're going to win black's queen for free anyway once again if black doesn't play pawn to c5 and let's say they play something else let's say knight c6 if this is too heavy for you just play chess i mean go back to your queen's pawn game play pawn to d4 bishop a4 turning this into the london system it's not too late or even pawn to c4 the ready but looking at how crazy i am i can still play pawn to e4 because once again the idea is that after pawn takes i want to get back my pawn this way so knight f6 is going to be played again i play knight c3 remember i just sacrificed one pawn so let's say bishop f5 i go bishop c4 again i know stockfish doesn't like this but i'm not going to be playing stockfish i mean so pawn to f3 in an effort to take back this pawn if they take I got queen takes f3 with the same idea of sacrificing my knight on f7 and winning black's bishop on f5 if knight d4 that's a little bit bad but i still have queen takes b7 right allowing black to do this it's okay i can go king e2 i mean king d1 is bad due to knight e3 check and i'm gonna lose my bishop so just king e2 and after knight takes a1 this is when i can go knight b5 and maybe i'm gonna do something here if rook c8 still go knight takes a7 by the way if bishop d6 which many people like playing i can just take you know that rook getting back my piece if rook b8 still have bishop b5 check and from a human perspective this is not easy for black to handle i know stockfish says white is losing but try this line in bleeds and come back in the comment section to tell me if i was just lying to you allow me to thank my patrons who support this channel and make sure that things are running smoothly so this is just a platform where i share other premium content including these tiers which you can join to enjoy the benefits below
So once again, thanks to my 104 members. You can see the list goes on and on and I'm sincerely grateful to all of these guys. You can also become a Casper Chess supporter by simply joining through the link in the description or in the comment section down below. Thank you guys as well for watching my videos on YouTube. Right, this is all for today. I hope you enjoyed watching this video like always and if you did, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel because that's what encourages me to keep on making more wonderful videos just like this one. Alright, until next time, thank you for watching this video. Bye bye.